All right, so here we go. We have our um, two pushpin surrogates, uh, alternate things. And so if you have pushpins, stick them straight in down through your cardboard um, so that they're sticking up. And then you have the, the pin head or the plastic part sticking up. That will be perfect for you. For me, I'm going to go up through the bottom so that these are laying flat along the bottom. Um, just pick a spot that's a little bit far apart, but not too far apart. Hang on one second. I'm going to push this through the back. There's one. And I'm going to put my mic there. Just pushing it through there. And so you see how mine are laying flat on the bottom here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of tape to make sure they stay flat. Push down hard, they should just also stay flat. All right, now I'm gonna flip back over. Look at that. Um, my two push pin sort of fakes here. They're gonna stick straight up. Now, we're going to take our string. Uh, I'm going to tie mine so that it becomes a circle-like shape. Don't make it too big so that it goes off your paper. We want to make sure it stays on the paper. So when we draw our ellipse, we can. Oh, come on, tie there. All right. Oh, it's minty. It's probably too small. Okay, a little bit bigger. All right, fiddly a little bit here. All right, so that's about how big my circle is there for my string. You're just gonna put that around your two push pins, or in my case, uh, my two paper clips. If you wanna cut off the tails, you can do that. Um, I don't have scissors nearby me at the moment. All right, I'll wait a minute for those of you who are participating to catch up. Um, Awesome. Everything except string, push pins, big raised paper clips. Yes, another paper clipper. Cool. Um, yes, so everyone should be doing the worksheet. Um, all right. So the worksheet numbers one, uh, we're going, I kind of did the procedure there a little bit. Um, we're about to move on to step number two. All right, so here I have a pen. Uh, it's just a regular ballpoint pen. Um, I will go back over it with Sharpie so that you can see the, the ellipse a little bit better. It just doesn't work very well with a Sharpie um, with the floss because it's so thin. So you're going to put your pen inside of this loop of string. Make sure it is taut. All right. And then you're just going to use these uh, push pins or paper clips to sort of guide your string around in a ellipse shape. So as I'm going around, make sure it's taut on those two points. Oops, it may get a little jaggedy, but we're gonna do our best here. Oh, mine's actually pretty circular, interesting. If you change the, ah, if you change the length of your string, you may get different ellipse shapes. It's slowly going, it keeps falling off my pen, but we will persevere and keep trying, stay determined here. Going around, all right. So let me just show you what that looks like with a Sharpie outline here, so you can see it a little bit better. a little bit. Now, if I were to, you don't have to do this part, I just wanted to show you real quick. If I make my string loop a little bit smaller, I might get a different shape. All right, so I'm getting a little bit smaller. It's still gonna fit around my two clips here. Now, when I go around, come on, stay up on there. Now, when I, oops. Around. I'm going to get a different 
ellipse shape. It is smaller because our loop was smaller, so our radius was smaller. If you don't have the supplies, you can just use my example um, for your worksheet information. All right, so I have two different radii here. You should only have one. I just wanted to show you the effect of making our um, loop a little bit smaller. Um, it, mine actually happens to be kind of circular instead of elliptical. Um, if I were to change, let me do that real quick. Let's make a new piece of paper. If I were to change the distance between my two foci, and get a little bit farther apart and see what happens. Right. Put on a new piece of paper here. All right, so. Hypotheses, how is this going to change? I made them a little bit farther apart. How is this going to change the shape of my ellipse here? Do you think it's going to get more circular? Do you think it's going to get more oval shaped, elliptical shape? All right, so let's see how this new ellipse will be different. Again, I'm going to keep it taut the entire way so it's supported by my two focuses. Oops, oh, come on, stay on there. Oh boy, this floss was not the best option for me here. It is slipping and sliding. All right, there we go. It's okay if yours looks a little bit messy. Um, I'll outline this because there's so many jaggedy things. Um, Interesting. It is kind of similar to my other one. You can see the difference there. It is a little bit similar because I only moved my focuses apart just a little bit, but it is a little bit more oval. It's a little bit flatter. Um, so it's more squished looking than my first set of ellipses. Okay, so let's look at what's next on our worksheet here. All right, so we did number one, we did number two. Um, once you've completed your ellipse, remove the push pins and the cardboard, make mark the position of your of each focus. All right, so I remove my cardboard. Here are my ellipses. Focuses, they are right there. All right, and this will be F1, and this will be F2. Now, the axis bisecting the ellipse along which the foci line is called the major axis. Let's see, blue Sharpie here, hopefully it's not dry. All right, so, oh, also mark the center. So here's where your ruler comes in. Um, I'm going to use centimeters because this is a physics class and centimeters are metric. So it is about, Let's see, five point eight. All right, so then halfway between that would be two point five is half of five plus two more there. All right, so then I'll mark this dot right here as my center. All right. The axis bisecting the ellipse along which the foci line is called the major axis. 
So if we were to draw a line here, using the ruler, between my foci, and it's a little bit off, it's okay. This is my major axis. And the other bisecting axis, uh, I'm on number three of our worksheet. Number three. Going this direction, uh, I don't have another color. Shoot, I guess I'll use black. This one. It's called R. Our minor axis. So the one that goes along with our foci, foci is our major axis because that's most likely going to be a bit longer, depending on how flat your ellipse is. And the one going perpendicular to that is called your minor axis. And as you move around the foci, the foci your major and minor axes might change. All right, number four. Just as the radius is the defining distance for a circle, the semi-major axis, so our blue one here, um, and semi-minor axis, this one up here, our blacker one, are the defining distances for an ellipse. Label the semi-major and semi-minor axes, axes on your ellipse. I just did that. Measure their values and record them in the space below. Now we need to measure our entire axis for our major. Axis, let's see. Our major axis is 13.5 centimeters. If you want to make that into meters, you can. Um, that is up to you. So 13.5 centimeters. So for the one labeled A is our major axis. That again is, let me write this down. Thirteen point five centimeters. I'm sorry, that's a little hard to read. And our minor axis, I'm going to measure that one, is going to be not quite as exact. Twelve point one. Oh, so close to twelve. Twelve point one centimeters. All right, so yours may be different if you're doing this at home. Um, for those of you who couldn't find your supplies when using mine for your worksheet, uh, those are our values here. All right, so number five, another defining property of ellipses is eccentricity. So this is how uh, circular or round versus flat our ellipse is going to be. The eccentricity defines distance between the two foci divided by the major axis. Eccentricity is essentially a measure of how flattened the ellipse is and is always between one and zero. It does not have a unit. Determine the eccentricity of your ellipse, show your work. So it is the distance between the two foci, which we found earlier. Oh, I didn't write that down. I apologize. It was five point. Eight, that's right. So write this here, F1 to F2 is 5.8 centimeters. So the distance between our two focuses or our foci is 5.8 centimeters. Now to find our eccentricity, we measure this distance by the major axis, our 13.5 centimeters. So we're going to do our math. I'll make a little section over here. All right. We're going to divide our focus distance here, 5.8 centimeters 
I'm going to divide that by our major axis. So again, if you're doing your own, you might have different numbers here. I'm gonna bring this one down to here. The centimeters will cancel out. So we, again, we'll not have our um, units, which is what we want. We don't want any units for our eccentricity. Get out your calculator. 5.8 divided by 13.5. Our eccentricity is 0. Point. Uh, let's round this to, we've been doing what, three significant figures? Oh. This one is two significant figures. We've got to round to two significant figures. Four, then nine will round to three. So our answer is between one, zero and one, perfect. That's what we want. When we divide, we get 0 0.43. Now, here comes some concept check questions. So make sure you have this math here um, for number five be sure to show your work. Don't just write the answer, show me that you were doing some work. Number six. Actually, I'll pause for a minute. I'll let you, if you're doing this on your own, have some time. I would love it to see uh, more, uh, more ellipses than my own. Give me a moment. Before we move on to number six. So number six and seven, we're gonna think about eccentricities. How circular or round, like a like an actual circle versus a really, really flat one uh, that's more uh, squashed looking. Which one? do you think would be an eccentricity of zero? Would it be a circle or would it be super squished? And which one do you think uh, eccentricity of one would look like? Would that be more of a circle or would that be more squished? As you are thinking about that, um, I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. Hopefully you can see the math for eccentricity. I'm going to try another ellipse because I'm having so much fun. Um, so I'm going to move my foci even farther apart. See what happens there, if that makes a difference. Which way will my circle go? Do you think it's going to be uh, more round like a circle or more flat and squished? Right. Just focus, spear my paper. All right, so I'm use the boss. My new dental hygiene will come in handy for physics. I'm going to make it a knot so I can have a circle shape here. Only because we have some time. How far apart are these? These are very far apart. All right. So now my focuses are even farther apart. Ooh, my leaf is almost not big enough. I will see how this works for our loop here. Come on, catch me again. All right. So here we go. Here we're. Looking at our different axes, my major and minor axes. Well, it looks like we're getting more and more squished, a flatter ellipse here than my one, my two other ones earlier. Oh, come on. All right. Outline this with my Sharpie so you can see it a little bit better. Now, I've increased the distance between my two foci. Oops. I will do my measurements in a moment. Okay. 
Okay, so two. I need to measure to find my center. So these are about seven point seven. Interesting. Half of seven is three point five. Half of seven is another one. Three point three. Five. So this dot will be my center. All right. Now, what I say? Three point five. Two is seven point seven centimeters. All right. Now I need to draw my axes. The black, I will draw my minor axis. This one is B, and it is. Eleven point three. And for blue, I'll draw the major axis. This A, and this one's thirteen point six. All right, so now, really quickly, we'll see what kind of time left. We'll find the eccentricity of my new ellipse. Do you think it's going to be closer to zero or closer to one? So we're going to take this one, goes in the numerator, and to divide it by one. Not much different than our first one here. So there are units cancel. Calculator. All right, 7.7 We have two senior figures. This will equal 0 0.57. So our flatter circle or ellipse here. Let's just get both of them. Our flatter circle or ellipse has oops, an eccentricity that's closer to one. So what do you think that means for an ellipse that has zero? Will that be more squished or more like a circle? What about one that has an eccentricity of one? Will that be more circular or will it be more squished? Remember six and seven. All right. Number eight is more information. Because orbits are elliptical and the sun is at one of our foci, so one of these could be our sun, uh, the distance between the sun and a planet changes depending on where in the orbit the planet is. So if this F1 is the sun, this one is our sun, F1 is the sun. The sun and planet changes when you're in the smallest distance between the sun and the planet is called a perihelion. So looking at our orbits, so if this is the sun, we're going to ignore F2. If F1 is our sun, let's do this. Here's a cute little sun. Here's our sun. We're going to ignore this F2 for now because our sun is only at one of our focuses. Out here around our orbit is our little planet Earth as it's going around the sun. All right, so there's our little cute little Earth going around and orbiting our sun. Now, the smallest distance between the sun and its planet, so here's our sun, here's our planet, this shortest distance here is called the perihelion. 
So this distance here, I'm running out of colors. Shoot. All right, so this distance here. Is our perihelion. Now, when our Earth is over here at the farthest point away from the sun, again, here's our sun. We do it on the bottom this time. Here's our sun. And as it goes all the way over here to our Earth at its farthest point away, I apologize that this is all black and blue. I don't have any other colors like red or green. Um, this is called an aphelion, or R sub A. So when our planet is closest to the sun, that's a perihelion. When we're farthest away from the sun, that's our aphelion. We chose F1 as our sun location. The sun doesn't move, we move around it. And as we go around in our orbit circle here, we have different positions relative to the sun. All right. Do I need to go back to any of these questions? Again, if you did this along with me because you couldn't find supplies, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you try this on your own. It's a lot of fun, so much fun that I did it twice. Um, and it doesn't take that much time. It doesn't take that much effort. Uh, be resourceful in your supplies like I was. Use some dental floss, some paper clips, um, whatever you can find. Um, and yeah, if you do, Take a picture of it. Um, make sure I can read all of your writing here. Um, if you want to use different colors, great. If you don't, again, make sure it's legible and I can read it. And that would be awesome, awesome. I might even consider giving you extra credit if you did this on your own versus with me. I'll think about it. I haven't decided yet. All right, any questions, comments, concerns, clarifications? So what did you say to do if we follow along with you number 10? Um, you can make a little note that says you did it with me during class. Good question. All right, I will post this video 